So the Gulf of Maine is a lot like a bathtub where right now the climate is turning up the warm water tap and it's turning down the cold water tap until we've warmed up really quickly. As the planet gets warmer and warmer, it gets harder and harder for the system in the North Atlantic to produce those cold conditions that are going to be really favorable to shrimp. Maine shrimp, it's not here anymore. It's missing. We miss it. Customers miss it. Restaurants miss it. It is a big culture shock because it's just something that we depend on and we don't have it anymore. Oh, I started when I was like five years old on my father's boat. We used to go out when we was kids and I'm uh, been doing it ever since. You know, you gotta be a little smart, but most of it's hard work. And the guy that worked the hardest made the most. I don't know if I really like it that much anymore because they won't let us just go fishing. <laughs> I don't know, it's just not like it used to be. We used to go shrimping and we'd get, back when they claimed out a lot of shrimp, we'd get 100 pounds an hour towing. And that was good fishing, you know? 100 pounds an hour was decent and they claimed out all kinds of shrimp. They give us quite a six month season. Well, it just, it used to be nice for a lot of fishermen. I mean, the, the whole length of the coast, people went shrimping, you know? I did like 40 years straight of shrimping. All my family did, my brothers, we all did it, you know, the whole family. And we did real good at it. But now they they haven't hit a season for five years, you know? Northern cold water shrimp from Maine once made up the bulk of all U.S. shrimp harvest. But today, Maine's shrimp industry is closed. Shrimp levels here have fallen to extremely low levels because of warm ocean temperatures. So in 2014, the Atlantic State's Marine Fisheries Commission began a moratorium on shrimp fishing. The ban was put in place to protect depleted shrimp inventory. This decision was based on a study conducted by the Gulf of Maine Research Institute, which found that the area's oceans were warming up faster than 99% of the planet's oceans. The average lifespan for northern shrimp is about five years. So in general, each female can reproduce about two times before they die. Northern shrimp spend most of their lives at the bottom of the ocean. And the bottom temperatures are relatively stable comparing to surface temperature. And for the past 15 years, the surface temperature has been increasing, especially in spring. And spring season is their hatching season. The suitable temperature for shrimps are like zero to five or six degrees Celsius. But we are not sure how they can adapt to this increasing temperature. And the temperature has increased to a record high level that we didn't observe in the past. So. In my opinion, before we reopen the fishery, we need to make sure this population is able to maintain themselves. Based on their life cycle, it takes around four years for shrimps to be available to the fishery. And we are not sure how they respond to the environment. So if the environment is not good for them and we keep fishing, then I think there is a possibility that they will go extinct. The shrimping ban is in effect until 2021. Even with the ban in place, marine scientists say shrimp face the threat of another population decline as ocean temperatures will continue rising. The Gulf of Maine, it's one of the most productive ecosystems in the world. The main species that people think of in the Gulf of Maine is Pandalus borealis, which is the northern shrimp. And this is really one of the warmest ecosystems where that species lives. 2012, which was the year we just blew away all of the temperature records in the Gulf of Maine. When we started to look at that record, one of the things we noticed was that throughout the 80s and 90s, we just kind of had this typical cycle, just sort of variability across the kind of normal temperature range. And then right around 2004, we started through this warming period. And after about 2010, we've, we've almost just jumped into this new temperature regime, where year after year we're encountering temperatures that are, you know, two or three degrees Fahrenheit above normal almost all of the time throughout the year. 
the more carbon dioxide that goes into the atmosphere, the faster these ecosystems are going to change, the harder it's going to be to have sustainable fisheries, and we're going to see productivity decline throughout the fisheries in the United States. So we are looking at over the next 30 years, so roughly out to about 2050, a world that's just going to continue to warm. And that's because the world is going to be adjusting to the carbon dioxide that's already been placed into the atmosphere. And so on that time scale, when we think about fisheries, it's really about getting the management right. So how do we account for the effect of warming? How do we be proactive? How do we think about forecasting and using that information when we're building fisheries and when we're setting quotas? We've been managing shrimp for 40 years. We're probably the oldest and still the largest processor of lobster in the U.S. We have a ground fish department. Um, so there's three legs of the bar stool. So we've had to try to adapt from uh, the loss of one of those legs. Shrimp was December through May. That being lost, um, you know, you have challenges with uh, holding key people when labor is so difficult to come by in the state. And then there's also the challenge of keeping the product open in people's minds and the chance that we will have an opportunity to harvest it again. As far as the moratorium goes, the technical committee, they believed that the resource was in low enough numbers that every shrimp should be preserved to ensure given the right environmental conditions, they can respond. As the, as the environment and these water conditions out here have changed, so has the distribution. There's been a tremendous reduction in the options open for fishermen to adapt. I can basically count on my hands in the state of Maine here, the players that are left. There'll be a few big guys standing and the small independent operators that dotted the Maine coast for the last couple hundred years are fading away. Shrimp is considered to be the most popular seafood to eat in the country. The U.S. shrimp industry is valued at nearly $531 million, providing more than 13,000 jobs estimated at $30 million in annual wages. Fishermen like Brian Beecrest say they should still be allowed to fish for shrimp because their livelihoods depend on it. Last winter was a slow year lobster. And if it had that shrimp season, it would take the pressure off the lobster boat, you know. I, I switched more into catching lobsters because it pushed you out of fishing. Luckily, that's been good, you know. But if it hadn't been for that, boy, the whole coast of Maine would be done, you know, because they won't let you go fishing. You know, there's, what is there left here for fishing boats the coast of Maine, you know? There's just, I don't, I don't think there's 20 of us left. It's a fear of, of not having another shrimp season in this generation. Having a shrimp season is a big piece of our community. My father was a fisherman, deep sea fisherman, and he would be out seven to 10 days at a time. He loved it. We couldn't wait for a shrimp season. Um, you know, we employed a lot of people, a lot of family. Everybody looked forward to shrimp season because it was a good solid four months. Summertime we stay busy, but it's, it's our winter that has really been really, really tough for everybody. It affects the people that come to Maine to eat seafood. People love Maine shrimp. It's one of the favorite items on the menu. But we do have the lobsters and we do have the clams, but it is too bad that we don't have our main shrimp season. It's, it's like a four month season and it, and it really, it's not good for all the families that don't have the work and. You know, this is a very dynamic issue with a lot of moving parts. A lot of it we don't have a firm understanding of. You aren't managing from one species to the next, but you're managing, trying to manage the whole environment. That, I think, is hopeful. Whether we have the resources and the money to be able to do that is another question. 